Similar to last video, I was planning ahead for this video too. And coincidentally, Square just announced a pack of pixel art remasters for the first six Final Fantasy games. And they didn't say when. Just soon. Also CHAOS! So now is a better time than ever to answer the age-old question, what Final Fantasy games should I play outside of Final Fantasy XIV? I pulled this too, and a lot of you haven't played any other Final Fantasy games, so this is especially aimed at you. I'm going to give suggestions based on Final Fantasy XIV, my own experience with the series, and other such issues. And even for those of you who have played many Final Fantasy games, be ready to dive into some of these too. You may have missed some of the good ones. I'm going to go in order for the mainline games, then talk about some of the side games and likely offer some contentious opinions throughout. Consider these super mini reviews. What games I say are worth your time and which you should just skip out on. Let's go! So as of now, the Pixel remasters are only announced for mobile and Steam, but this seems like something that will be a soft launch and will eventually come to consoles. But until then, you PlayStation players are out of luck for the classic collection. That or have other systems with these games on them. But even a trash computer can likely run these games. Literal toasters can run classic FF now. So there's your out. But let's start with FF1 and 2. Don't, just, just don't. Unless you're really into experiencing the original games. Just skip out on these. Half of Final Fantasy 1, the original release at least, literally doesn't work. And unless Pixel Remasters also come with mechanical fixes, half of your decisions will literally be wrong. Not just suboptimal or such, literally wrong. The game will still be completable unless you make an extremely bad decision, but still. Final Fantasy II, meanwhile, is where they started to try to have stories. Extremely basic ones, but stories. This was also the NES era, though. So for that era, maybe it was actually a complex story and we're just desensitized to how basic it is nowadays. They also tried a complex leveling system that just doesn't work. Imagine if in Final Fantasy XIV, gear and stuff didn't boost your stats reasonably. Instead, you had to go smack enemies to up your attack, and be smacked in the face to up your survivability. It was a very self-cannibalistic system. It had other bad designs too, but that's the big interesting aspect of the game. And then we come to Final Fantasy III. The first game I might say maybe to, but also don't. The game generally is fine enough for 90% of it. But then you reach the final dungeon, the Crystal Tower. Sound familiar? That Crystal Tower. This is the main reason why you might want to go through this game. It's also a reason why you should avoid Final Fantasy III. I have not seen a single person anywhere on the internet ever say that the Crystal Tower was anything but absolute hell. And that is also after they went and did the optional Eureka dungeon below the tower, which gets you the two final jobs and the best items. Honestly, unless you really, really need to play them for yourself, you can safely skip them. If anything, I suggest watching Some Call Me Johnny's video on Final Fantasy 3. He's a fellow Final Fantasy 14 addict like the rest of us, and he brings up how much the Final Fantasy 14 raid resembles the actual Final Fantasy 3 Crystal Tower. Also, his videos on Final Fantasy 1 and 2 were also great. Did you know the free trial now includes the award winning Heaven Sword expansion? But now, we move into what is generally considered the first good. Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy 4. Let me say now, if you take anything away from this video, play Final Fantasy 4 before Endwalker comes out. If you have completed the story, seen anything of FanFest, or seen the hundreds of flying robot whales, 
you know Final Fantasy IV is going to get a lot of attention for Endwalker. We do have a few pieces of Final Fantasy IV fan service besides the giant whale, like this thing. But that aside, there's a lot of potential fan service we could see in Endwalker. Lunarians, the Four Fiends, Golbez or Zemis. Fan service itself isn't the only reason to experience 4 though. As I said, this is the first good Final Fantasy game, and it is a very good one. It's a story of love and redemption, lots of fun characters, and some of the absolutely most iconic parts of Final Fantasy. We have the famous Spoonie Bard line that lives on in the auto-translation dictionary, the iconic Dragoon pose of Kane Highwind, and so much else to love in this game. Again I say, personal biases aside, this is the one game a Final Fantasy XIV fan should experience ahead of Endwalker. To quote some Call Me Johnny, Final Fantasy V is a better Final Fantasy III. For a long time, I thought Final Fantasy V was the first game to have the job system because, well, nobody talked about three. V is a very beloved game, and there's a whole thing called the Four Job Fiesta? There's so much going for Final Fantasy V that it literally caused me, till I was like 20, to think that Final Fantasy V was the first and only game to do the job system. This game also has some major pieces of fan service and such, but it's also probably the Final Fantasy I am least familiar with. I know Butts, X-Death, The Tree Man, and like, that's just about it. Oh, and Boko. Boko is all that matters. If you think the job system of Final Fantasy 3 is cool and wanted to play it for that, play Final Fantasy V instead. Experience a much better game. I can't honestly recommend it though personally, having so little knowledge and having never played it. I've at least touched even Final Fantasy 1. Honestly, this is the game I am most looking forward to playing with the remasters. Final Fantasy VI. Final Fantasy VI. In the pantheon of Final Fantasy, people argue which is best, and it always comes down to Final Fantasy VI and Final Fantasy VII. The correct answer is Final Fantasy IX. Zidane spits all over your Midgar bullshit. But between those two, I'd always say it's Final Fantasy VI. And not just because I haven't played 7. Yes, really. Final Fantasy VI is what I consider the crown jewel of the series. We have a huge cast of wonderful characters, so many little threads and subplots. The side stories in the back half of the game are so wonderful. There's so many great moments in this game. This is where Ultros comes from, and across all Final Fantasy villains, this is the one with the most successful villain in the series, Kefka. If I had to give criticisms to this game, I'd say there's some major job identity issues in the game. Like, Strago is the Blue Mage and uses attacks learned from enemies. Realm, his adopted daughter, uses Sketch to copy the attacks of enemies and use them against them. One of my favorites, Gao, who copies enemies' attacks to use. I mean, all three of them do work completely differently in practice. Gao can only learn his skills on his island, and also is part Berserker. Strago is complete basic blue mage, and Realm copies the attack mid-fight only, 
based on what enemy you are against, and it's not banked book spells. But how similar they are together always rubbed me the wrong way. There's also Mog, Umaro, and Gogo. These three also always felt bad to me as well, even if they offer some fun options. But also, that's stretching just to try and be fair about a game I genuinely love. Hell, in college, I specifically went and bought an SNES cartridge just to play between classes. That's how much I care for this game. So this one is definitely worth your time. Especially with the Pixel Remasters in the works. Now we can start getting into the games I know you console Final Fantasy players can get in on. Starting with the other super popular game, Final Fantasy VII. This is the one most other people probably say you should play. Unlike expertly done pixel art, these early models don't hold up visually. But the material system allows for lots of customization. There's a very deep story to be had here. People love the characters, and Sephiroth is probably the most well-known villain in the series, even if Kefka is a better one. As I said, I've not actually played this game for myself, and I know I really should. But it's a game that definitely suffers from the overhype crowd. It definitely feels its age more than Final Fantasy VI does even, but fully objectively, I can't say this wouldn't be a good place to start, and is one you can actually play reasonably unlike 1 through 6. PSN has it, and it's not genuinely terrible mobile ports like Steam has. This is also a game with a lot of series staples, Nimit Breaks, Materia, and the weapons. Not like swords and stuff, these weapons. Overall, if you're looking for a classic RPG to play now, 7 is a good pick. What isn't a good pick is Final Fantasy VIII. I can't say everything it does is bad. It has some clever ideas and a decent story. But man, this one I can't recommend at all. I actually played this in college as well. Nearby in a little shopping mall was an independent game store where I picked up copies of Final Fantasy VIII and 9 for my PlayStation 1. I did not enjoy my time with Final Fantasy 8 at all. Loading times on original hardware are super slow and aggravating. I can't say this game wasn't pushing the system to its absolute limits. It tries some very technical stuff, but the mechanics and load times don't mix. Drawing magic from magic points and enemies just encourages you to grind them out until you hit 99 and be extremely conservative with your magic casts. The junction system is super confusing until you start getting it. And triple triad... Oh my god, I never felt the loading screens more than trying to play a single triple triad match. I'll stick to Final Fantasy XIV triple triad instead because it doesn't take forever for a single match. The game also has enemy scaling, yet actively encouraged to not grind in this game because enemies level with you. In some cases, grinding can actually make the game harder instead of easier. It's like a reverse Final Fantasy 3. But I guess this is also the game Eden came from? If you needed a fan service reason to play it besides Triple Triad. Honestly though, maybe the remaster they did recently on Final Fantasy 8 that boosted up the graphics, will have no load times because it's modern hardware and such, it might be a good time, though I still don't enjoy the basic gameplay loop and drawing of magic. What you shouldn't need an excuse to play is Final Fantasy IX. This is probably the game that is least represented in Final Fantasy XIV, that or Final Fantasy II. Back during the Omega Raid series, I was begging for a Kuja fight. I never got it, unfortunately, but my PlayStation 1 is sitting just on the side. The Steam version is apparently cool and has HD backgrounds available. If I need my Kuja fix, I can get it. 
this is probably the game that has a story that best speaks to me. When I say I'd pick Final Fantasy IX over six or seven, I mean it. This game defined my childhood beyond all the others. That's quite a coincidence as well, as this game's major theme is identity. A theme it nails perfectly. I like the skill system from using specific gear pieces and learning skills. It's cool and encourages builds in its own way. And the world is one that filled me with such pure wonder every time I played it. Honestly, it's hard to put into words just what all I love about this game without also going into a very deep dive. And from the length of the video, you can see I'm trying not to do that. But to give some negatives, Trance as a system is really dumb. Tetramaster, this game's card game instead of Triple Triad, is really hot garbage. And the final boss kind of comes out of nowhere. Okay, back to positives. This game has its own levels of series representation. We have the most famous Black Mage design for our boy Vivi, who essentially got his own Hildebrand story in 14. Vamo a la Flamenco for Chocobo Hot and Cold, which would become the dancer theme for Final Fantasy XIV, and more. If I had to pick one game in the classic 3D series for you to play, this would be my number one pick. Hell, it's my number one pick in general. I only say four because of it being relevant to Endwalker. But man, what I wouldn't give for more Final Fantasy IX representation in 14. I use the Dane's outfit for my gatherer glamour even. But if I could have only one thing, it's an orchestrian role. Not a boss fight, not a zone, but a single music piece to play in my house. A reminder for me that you are not alone. While its age probably puts it more in the classic section, more than the modern section, I consider Final Fantasy X the first in the modern era of Final Fantasy. Full disclosure, I don't like this one either. The big Blitzball section always turned me off, and I'd have to grind for hours to get a win because I refused to make Walker sad. But I can also see why people love this one. It pulls off some of its main themes wonderfully. Spira's Spiral of Destruction is well executed. Some of the areas are beautifully made. This is an extremely well-realized world. The gameplay systems are arguably the best turn-based combat systems, if not in the series, but all turn-based RPGs. Every character is super unique and useful in their own ways. Except Kamari. Also, I'm sure everyone knows by now how stupidly fun the final boss theme is. Otherworld is just dumb in all the right ways. Though I can't deny Return to Xanarkand is a beautiful track. No matter what my personal opinions on the game are, I genuinely can't deny that this game deserves every bit of the love it receives. I still see people wanting a sphere grid type system for leveling up in future Final Fantasy games. But speaking of personal opinions, for all the plaque Final Fantasy 13 got, this is where Final Hallway got its start. I absolutely hate Titus, and yes it is Titus, as a character. The love plot doesn't at all interest me. Final Fantasy IV makes for a more compelling love story, and when the SNES title is beating your super cutscene heavy PS2 game, you messed up. Lots of little things here and there that just make me not enjoy this game overall. If nothing else, buying 10 means you are also buying 10 too, which gameplay wise is even better than Final Fantasy X. It's just absolutely everything else about the game is super garbage to make up for it. But if you want a two for one special, 10 plus 10 2 remaster is a good investment. Fall Fantasy XI is an MMO. 
unless you have time for another MMO, don't. I'm probably never going to ever play this either. I'm not gonna say definitely, just in case for whatever reason one day I decide to do a Final Fantasy XI thing, but no. Final Fantasy XII is my favorite Final Fantasy. It doesn't have the same emotional impact 6 and 9 have for me, but 12 is top tier. The Zodiac Age takes what was already a very good game and makes it way better. It has a lot of special options, quality of life things, and generally is so fun. A common criticism of the game is it plays itself. Okay, so you're bad at the game, grinded 20 levels ahead of the main story's level curve, and did none of the side content. Thanks for confirming that for me, because that's what that means. 12 doesn't pull punches if you don't grind up or plan ahead. Then there's the super bosses, who will absolutely wreck you. There are so many hunt targets with their own special mechanics, some of them extremely difficult. The license board was super unappreciated at the time, even in the original version, for how freeform it let you build your characters. And there's a real underappreciation for the plot. Vaughn serves way more of a purpose than he's given credit for. Pinello is super worthless though. Honestly, I have little to nothing bad to say about this game. It all boils down to individual fights or puzzles being bad. I really have to stretch to call stuff bad. I guess having to buy magic, techniques, and even specific gambit conditions is really annoying when you're looking for one specific option? I don't know, that's all I got. And that is nothing in comparison to having what is the best appearance of Gilgamesh in the entire series. And I will stand by that one no matter what you tell me. This Gilgamesh is amazing. Final Fantasy XIII as a series, yes, a series of three games, no. If you want to see why this is the least liked set of games in the series, go right ahead. But overall, I'd say each of the games is marred with huge issues that prevent them from being overall enjoyable. And I say this as someone who doesn't subscribe to the Final Hallway criticism, well, I do, but Final Fantasy X did it first and someone who played it day one, and didn't have all the internet spewing hate until after I had finished playing it. I disliked it without the major criticisms from the fanbase. Though 2 and 3 do marginally do better than the original Final Fantasy XIII. And so we've reached the end of the mainline series with Final Fantasy XV. This one has a soft spot in my heart. As of this video, I'm streaming this every Saturday over on my Twitch. I played it back when it first came out and enjoyed my time with it a lot. Even the infamous Chapter 13, which I actually thought was really cool. The only reason I stopped was I was playing it on a console that wasn't mine, I was borrowing an Xbox to play it. The final thing I did in the game was upon getting into chapter 14, I fought a demon wall, I killed the demon wall, and then the game immediately crashed on me. And that was the last time I played Final Fantasy XV before this recent playthrough. And it was clear that Nomura Stain was all over it. The story was super messy, gameplay did have plenty of rough spots, etc, etc. But even now, playing the game nowadays, I'm still having tons of fun with it. I'm experimenting more, messing around in combat, just having a good old time. I love Arden as a villain. The combat is super fun, even when it feels like it is messing up when I press the button to do something else. It's super flawed, but it is a good time. I love these good boys. They're the only boy band I will ever follow. 
and I also consider this training for Final Fantasy 16. 16 is even more action combat oriented than even 15 is, looking more similar to Devil May Cry combat. And best of all, it's being made by Business Division 3, the same team that works on Final Fantasy 14. So if nothing else, I'm prepared for an action Final Fantasy next year or in two years or however long we have to wait for it. But Prompto is best boy. Now that we're done with the mainline stuff, let's take a quick talk of side games. People love Final Fantasy Tactics, so you might like it if you enjoy tactics games. Even if Final Fantasy Tactics is in reality a really bad game. You'll need a PSP or such to play that one though. Final Fantasy 7 Remake is not a remake of 7, but basically a spin-off of 7 and its entirely own game. The gameplay is entirely different, the story is going to differ too, and generally people think it's a good time. It's also action based and may be better training for Final Fantasy 16 than Final Fantasy 15 is. Also finally, World of Final Fantasy is Pokemon Final Fantasy sort of? If you like collecting, you may want to check that one out. Also Type Zero is a very mixed opinion one, but it looks interesting. Alright, let me sum up everything into a nice little box. Games you should play in the series. 4, 6, 9, and 12. Those are my absolute top picks. Not just good, or I hear are good, but I think are the best for someone who has not played the other Final Fantasy games. 4 because of Endwalker, 6 as my 2D classic pick, 9 as my 3D classic pick, and 12 as my modern pick. I'm sure other people have other things to say on what games they think you should play, but if you want to break into Final Fantasy as a series, those are my choices. Share with me what your favorite Final Fantasy games are or otherwise people should play to get into the series. Maybe you can help some people move out of zero games played into the 9 plus games played tier. But take care and may the power of Ananid Hogs lay waste to your enemies. Patron crawl, patron crawl, links are down below. I'd like to give the extra special thanks to Arya Deva, Amen Alkti, Benjamin Hahn, Body Clock, Ethan, Ethan Olson, Evan, Jamie Cottrell, Kyle Steinhauser, Melfi, Misella, Scott Stanley, Vala LLC, and Yvonne the Moose. Thank you all for patronizing. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day. Signing out. Bye. Chaos.